Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Metzler, and I'm the Director of Organizational Development at Honor Health. Today, we're going to be spending a few minutes talking about one of my very favorite topics, and that is culture as a driver to improve employee engagement and organizational outcomes. Before we dive in, though, I want to take just a, a few short minutes to introduce you to Honor Health. Who are we and what do we do? Honor Health is a locally owned nonprofit community health care system serving an area of 1.6 million people in the greater Phoenix area. It encompasses six acute care hospitals, an extensive medical group, outpatient surgery centers, a cancer care network, clinical research, medical education, a foundation, and various community services. We have a number of people that work with Honor Health ranging from over 3,000 expert physicians, over 12,000 dedicated staff, employees, and leaders, and more than 3,100 caring volunteers who give their time to working in partnership with staff and with our patients. Uh, beyond that, Honor Health has almost 150 years of combined experience serving our communities in various ways through programs such as NOAA and Desert Mission. Honor Health also has a very rich history. In 2014, one year after affiliating John C. Lincoln Health Network and Scottsdale Healthcare officially merged. In March 2015, the organization came together and rallied around one new brand, Honor Health, to signify unity as a single company. Drawing upon those two rich legacies, Honor Health continues to be a locally owned nonprofit integrated healthcare system. Our commitment is to provide our communities with personalized, connected, quality care with a focus on improving the health and well being of those that we serve, more convenient access to healthcare increased coordination of medical care, expanded network of high quality primary care and specialty physicians. If any of you have ever worked an organization that is merged with another organization, you know it's a lot of work. And the question becomes, how do you do this? How do two organizations come together? Post-merger, Honor Health faced all the same challenges that most merging entities do, starting first and foremost with cultural assimil assimilation, bringing together two organizations and rallying around one culture. Beyond that, you have the added work of integrating processes and aligning those to get the work done, streamlining technology and systems, and driving to uh, efficiencies of scale, economies of scale, supply chain efficiencies. Our focus today is gonna be on cultural assimilation. But before we dive too deep, I wanna just pause and talk briefly about culture and defining what is it, because culture is a word that's thrown around a lot these days, and it can mean a lot of different things to different people. At Honor Health, we find it very simply, and to us, culture is values come to life. Culture is a living demonstration of what a company or a group of people value and what they don't value. You see where culture fits and our values fit in terms of our hierarchy, starting at the top with our mission, our vision, our purpose, how we've positioned our in terms of our brand and so forth. And then at the bottom right, you'll see that our values are foundational to accomplishing all of this. We like to think at Honor Health that if mission, vision, purpose, and brand are what we aim to do, then culture is how we aim to do it. And that really is the secret sauce. If you read on this slide our mission to improve the health and well being of those that we serve, if you look at our vision to be the partner and choice, as we uh, transform healthcare for our communities. And if you work for a healthcare system or a hospital and you compare your mission and vision with ours, you may not see a lot of differences, but it's truly in our values where our culture comes to life. And that is where you'll see when we get to some of the engagement outcomes and performance outcomes for our business, um, we really think that that's a differentiator for us and we're excited to tell that. Another question though worth considering is who owns culture? Is it just the C-suite? Is it the front lines? At Honor Health, we think that everybody owns culture, ranging from our CEO, Todd Laporte, all the way down to one of our staff members or volunteers. We all are responsible for living our values each and every day. It's what we do, it's what we say to each other as colleagues, as well as to our patients and the communities in which we serve. That's truly where culture comes to life. Another question that we had to answer as we were looking at our culture and our values and redefining that and getting ready for transformation is, 
why trends, everything starts with the why. And we had a number of different reasons that drove our motivation behind transforming our culture. First, it started with evolving. Every organization has to evolve to survive. And we at Honor Health had to evolve to keep pace with macro healthcare system, healthcare ecosystems, and the evolution that was going on in the broader healthcare market. But also locally, we don't wanna just participate in the local markets, we wanna lead, we wanna um, really win in our local markets. And so we had to grow and change so that we could do that. Lastly, as part of John C. Lincoln and Scottsdale coming together, we had to embrace the best of our past organizations. And we had to clearly define our present of who we are and who we wanted to be so that we could best meet the needs uh, of the communities that we serve in the future, our patients, and the local as well as broader markets in which we work and serve. Landed on. Honor Health is a culture of eye care. It's an acronym that we're going to unpack over the next few slides, but the acronym comes together synergistically to really, you see that part there. It, it is. We are a, a heart-based system. Our culture is around the heart and it's around the idea that it's not we care, it's I care. It's every single person, every single volunteer coming into work every single day saying, I care for my colleagues and I care for the people that I serve. So we've defined it. We drew our line in the sand to say, this is our culture, but the question becomes, what does this culture look like on a daily basis? And that's what I wanna share with you all right now. So we put together a, we call a behavioral dictionary that outlines each of our values and then how we define that. And then a number of different behavioral based competencies and values and behaviors that define what these values look like each and every day. So the I in I care stands for innovation. And we define that to be, it means keeping an open mind, embracing change, taking risks and maintaining creative mindset as we work to continuously improve the care that provide. To the right, you'll see the action language that says, so let's demonstrate a humble and open mindset. Let's constructively question the status quo and on and on and on. I'm not going to read through all the bullets on this slide. I'll let you take a look at it. But what you'll see here as we begin to unpack the values is these are the things that matter most for our leaders and for our staff and what we do each and every day. So it starts with innovation. Also, part of the eye care model is collaboration, how we build trust and partner with others within and across boundaries so that we can offer the best care and drive excellent outcomes. The A in, in eye care is accountability. It's driving a spirit of excellence, stewardship, and integrity in all that I do for others. The R in eye care stands for treating others the way I want to be treated. Probably one of the most simple definitions that you'll find goes back to what we've learned as children, but that's what drives how we treat each other and our patients each and every day. And it's more than just words on a wall. Lastly, the E in I care stands for empathy. It's each of us being vulnerable and seeking first to understand others so that I can best meet their needs. You can come back and revisit this in the recording if you want to get a deeper view for how we define each of these values to the right with the bullets. But we wanna just highlight and the, the synergy of these and how they've come to life. I care innovation, collaboration, accountability, respect, and empathy. We believe that all of these added together equates to best care for our patients and excellent organizational outcomes. And that feeds in what we have defined in terms of what successful cultural transformation looks like for us. And it starts with driving excellent employee experiences. It has to start there. Having employees and leaders who are highly engaged, who are growing and developing in their roles and in their careers at Honor Health, it's driving excellent performance. And it's having a great family environment where people feel like they can come, they can be psychologically safe, they trust their leaders, and they feel like they have a place, a place where they are included and where they belong. It has to start there because if we're not taking care of our employees, we're not going to be able to drive excellent patient experiences. And so this shows up in terms of HCAPs, our patient experience scores, safety, and quality of care. If we are taking care of our employees and we're taking care of our patients, the metrics and the organizational outcomes are going to reflect. And there are other organizational outcomes as well. Our values 
as I said before, should not just be words on a wall, words on a poster. When we talk about the importance of innovation, it should truly drive how we innovate. It should drive how we allocate funds every year in our budgeting program so that we can take risks. We can try new things, whether it's with new systems, new initiatives, new projects. It's these values come to life. It's how we manage change. It's uh, collaborating the C in the eye care values. It's including the right stakeholders. It's including them in the process, communicating well, and on and on and on. It's hiring best fit staff who can live out these values every single day. And it's being able to do this in a very fast paced healthcare environment. So what did we do? It's easy to outline the values. Actually, it wasn't so easy, but um, it's easy to say these are what our values are gonna be. How did we actually lift off? How did we launch this process across an organization of multiple hospitals, multiple medical groups, cancer center, um, nonprofit community services, over 12,000. It's a lot of work. And so I'm going to walk you through over the next few slides what we did, and then we'll talk about how we've continued to live out and sustain these values in our culture moving forward. So first and foremost, in terms of liftoff and launch, it has to start with executive sponsorship and reinforcement. We took an organizational wide approach doing this. And what we did was we assigned each value one full month. So starting in January of 2019, January was the very first letter in the eye care values. It was a org wide focus on innovation in January of 2019. And in terms of executive sponsorship and reinforcement, we also had fantastic executive sponsors across our C-suite who raised their hand to say, you know what, I wanna take January. I wanna be the champion for innovation. Someone else raised their hand to say, I wanna represent collaboration across the organization in February. And so across the first five months of 2019. And uh, we did a number of different activities with these executive champions. But one of the main things that we did was we did a series of fireside chats at each of our major locations where these executives came out. You'll notice me there in the screenshot. And I would interview each of these executives. This is our CEO, Todd Laporte. He took innovation in the first month of 2019 and we went out to each of the six locations and invited all of the leaders at each of those locations to come and hear this chat over the course of an hour to hear what each of our executives thought about these values and how they saw these values coming to life in terms of how we run the business and how these leaders across the business can be a part of living and driving these values every single day. It was very, very powerful because frontline leaders got to see our senior most executives. They got to hear from them. And um, it was just really, really powerful. We recorded them. And so these continue to be available moving forward as new leaders join on our health. They get to hear from our executives about what these values mean to them. Beyond that, we had a very robust strategy to engage leaders and our staff. And it started with developing weekly leader toolkits that were made up of many different segments. So you'll see to the left in purple, we define what the were each month. And at the top, we had those bullets that define behavior so that everyone can be aligned around what do we mean by innovation and what innovation looks like every single day at Honor Health. But beyond just defining the values and aligning people around those values, we wanted to drive meaningful discussion every single week around these values. So these toolkits went out every single week and we would highlight each week some sub behavior. Uh, to say, okay, innovation is this big umbrella behavior, but you'll see here, let's say week two, we wanted people to focus on, hey, leaders, talk to your staff in your daily board meetings, board huddle meetings, in your one-on-one. -on -one. This week, what keeps you and your team from having a more open mindset to change? How does humility open us to change? So this week was very much focused on change and how that feeds into a mindset of innovation. So we got leaders and staff talking. We also wanted them to learn about these weekly and monthly behaviors and to apply them to the job. So as part of these weekly toolkits, we also offer them a weekly micro challenge. In this example, we asked them to pick a recent or an upcoming change that they wanted to learn more about. We asked that they talk with their leader or a relevant business partner to better understand that change then share it with their team. And then we also had learning resources that were mapped to the pipeline 
of uh, the different leaders in the organization. So we had a YouTube video around a practical approach for innovation for supervisors this week, for managers up through associate vice presidents. We had a Skillsoft Percipio innovation module that was available. For VPs and above, there was a Franklin Covey module called One Light. And every week, every month, we had different learnings, micro learnings that were available to support ongoing understanding and application of these innovative behaviors. Third, we wanted to reinforce the launch of these values through celebration and storytelling. We had not had an all leader meeting at Honor Health since the MERP in, I believe, 2015. And so in the spring of 2019, we had another leader rally where over a thousand leaders came together for half a day. And it was really powerful. The theme was the power of one. It was our way of saying, moving forward, we are rallying around one culture and our I care values. We are not two legacy organizations anymore where people still talked about how we did things at John C. Lincoln or at Scottsdale, but it's the power of one organization moving forward. All of the collateral, all of the materials were anchored to our I care values. You'll see here a snapshot that we had with beautiful graphics and verbiage around, this was collaboration, but we had um, a lot of materials and communications around all of our values and how that's continuing to drive what we do as a business. And then also we had a day of inspirational speakers and stories. The woman that you see here is Kim Post. She's our executive vice president of operations. And so she was up on stage. Other SVPs and CEOs and um, EVPs were on stage as well, sharing stories about how these values come to life. And it was just so, so powerful. So that's what kind of brought to a close our five month launch strategy around our values. Question then became, what now? It's, it's great to have this excitement and this momentum, but how do we not take our eyes off the ball? How do we keep our eyes on the ball and continue to live and sustain a culture of eye care moving forward? So that's what we're gonna talk about now. We have a number of different strategies and tactics that we've done and we continue to do to drive a culture of eye care. It starts with who we hire. It's hiring people that fit our cultural vision. If any of you listening work in leadership development and learning or have ever worked in leadership development and learning, you know how hard it is at times to really train people and to get people bought into growing and developing and to changing their behaviors. But it outline a vision of who we want to hire. And if we can hire people that fit our eye care values and our vision for the organization moving forward, and we don't have to change these people, it's who they are inherently. they are people that are gonna be more bought in to change. They're gonna be more collaborative. They're gonna be more apt to hold themselves and others accountable. They're gonna be more respectful of other people and more empathic. It's gonna make it that much easier to have a culture that lives and breathes these values moving forward. And so our process was infusing the eye care values into the very beginning of the sourcing process where our sourcing team uses job descriptions, competencies and the eye care values to source and screen leads. So it starts there. It's also leveraging assessments like a predictive index, which is now taken by every single candidate that applies for a role at Honor Health and integrating that into the application process. Our recruiters reviewing results and tailoring interview questions based around our eye care values to ensure everyone who's coming here and interviewing for a position is a cultural fit. And it's also making sure that there are eye care based behavioral based questions that guide hiring managers to ensure that the candidate is also a cultural fit. That is a huge step in the process and I think has been a big win for us. Beyond that, it's not just finding people that are a fit, but it's driving a values-based onboarding experience from day one. So starting day one, we have all of our staff going through new, new employee orientation, which is built around and anchored to our eye care values. We also have a high-touch new leader onboarding experience. Previously, we would do, we would do it in groups. Now due to COVID, we're doing high-touch one-on-one experiences between new leaders and between human resource consultants and OD partners. We also have uh, baked into our HRIS systems system-rated notices that go out to leaders. That's a good reminder. It's a good prompt at the 30-day mark, the 60-day, the 90-day, and up to the six-month mark into a new employee's tenure with Honor Health. That's just reminding leaders, hey, check in with your staff and see how they're doing. 
and possibly what we can do to make sure that they are they're most engaged, they're performing well, and that they want to stay and continue to be successful at Honor Health. And so those prompts are really, really important. We also have new leader assimilations that are available upon request, which if you're not familiar with new leader assimilations, it's a facilitated discussion between new leaders and their directs that happen hopefully within the first month. And it's a way to ramp up working relationships faster and to clarify expectations between that new leader uh, and their staff around what do expect, here's my style, here are my hot buttons and so forth. That's a great way, again, if you think about our values, it's driving collaboration from day one. It's driving respect. It's driving accountability to expectations earlier on. Driving accountability. Another way that we've done this is using our eye care values into our annual performance review process. So our performance review process, our look back, is broken up into two major sections. What we do, results to goals and performance expectations, and how you do your job, the eye care values. And what's really great, if you think back to how we highlighted the importance of executive sponsorship, is our executives have been on board with infusing the eye care values into our performance management look back process, so much so that now 40% of the overall rating is made up of the IQ values. So how you perform to those values. And that feeds into your merit reward. So 40% weighting in terms of how you lived out these values is gonna reflect how you are rewarded with your merit. Powerful. A way that we are living and sustaining a culture of eye care is creating ambassadors can't just be HR or OD or our executives that are preaching the values and living them each day. We have to have ambassadors. And ambassadors, this is a voluntary way, it's a movement we call it, for employees to connect on a deeper level with their colleagues, to represent causes they care about, and to fulfill the unique purpose they bring to Honor Health each day. Membership and participation is a personal pledge to bring our mission to life and our values to life and to inspire change both inside as well as outside people's daily work. And so these are our best of the best, people that it's purely optional who are raising their hands to say, I want to be an ambassador for Honor Health. And that's what has really helped this movement push our culture forward. Something else that we've done, which is important and critical to driving massive organizational change and cultural change is messaging, communicating everywhere, early and often and consistently. So it started with weekly newsletters that our marketing and communication team push out every single week. We flooded the organization with messaging around our new values and we continue to. Also, we flooded our websites, both our intranet site as well as our external facing on our health site with our values, outlining what are our values and how do they feed our mission and our vision and our brand of making healthy personal. We've got new signage. So any hospital that you walk into, any medical group, you're going to see our values, what we stand for. Even if you walk by a computer um, that has fallen asleep, you got the screensaver, you see the values popping up everywhere you look. People are seeing our values. And also, you've got our career sites and our job sites, which feeds back into hiring talent that fits. If you've got someone who's thinking about applying for a job at Honor Health, they go to our job site, they're going to see a video from our senior leaders talking about our values and what it means to work, which is very, very powerful. And it lets people know from day one, is this an organization that I want to be a part of that stands for what I stand for or I keep looking? Lastly, our eye care values are embedded in our code of conduct. And these are our core principles of how we expect people to behave. And these are the things that every single summer when we have our annual compliance modules that people have to take, the honor code an attestation that everyone has to review and sign off on, and the values are a part of that. So I want to switch gears. We've been talking about who Honor Health is, who we are, uh, our cultural transformation journey that we've been on over the last years, what that has looked like, what we've done to launch mm -hmm. that, live it, and sustain it. The question, and probably why you tuned in, is, okay, that's great, Josh, but what are the results? How has this actually driven your organization to be better and more engaging and to drive various organizational outcomes? So that's what I want to talk about now, and I'm very excited too. So the true test was measuring our success. The first thing I want to talk about in terms of an indicator of our success is employee engagement. So we've been working with Press 80 now a little over two years, 
and they have six core engagement questions that they ask every single year that is their, their um, core measure of employee engagement. And so we just did a small pulse. At the end of 2018, we had over 80% response rate. And for those six questions, the engagement indicator score was 4.13, scale that goes up to five. If you compare that to the national healthcare average percentile, we were at the 48th percentile. So roughly right in the middle of the pack. And same with the other um, percentile, which was the national integrated healthcare system average. And that compares us not just to all healthcare systems and hospitals, small mom and pop hospitals, but that's comparing us to systems that are built and structured very much like ourselves. That was also at the 48th percentile. So clearly not where we wanted to be, but it gave us a good pulse to say, okay, here's where we are. We then launched our cultural vision and the organization, I, I don't pretend like the results you're gonna see are solely the result of a cultural transformation, but we do believe the cultural transformation played a big part in the leap that we were able to see, but there was an, a, a lot of other great work that was done as well within the business. One year later, we tested again and we did our broader survey, but we asked those core six engagement questions and we saw 82% um, response rate. Our engagement indicator year over year jumped to 4.27. May not seem like a lot when you compare 4.13 to 4.27, but when you look at the leap in our percentile ranking, it was staggering, it blew us away. So if you look, the national healthcare average leapt from 48th percentile to the 82nd percentile in one year. The national integrated healthcare system average percentile leapt from the 48th percentile to the 87th percentile. But beyond that, since we did the larger survey, we asked all the questions that fed into calculating team index scores as well as our leader index score. And you'll see here, we had fantastic results around 50% um, of our teams were, were falling into the team index score one, which is these are the teams that have the highest trust, they're the best performing. So over half, slightly over half of our teams fell within team index one, which was great and much higher than many organizations tend to see in terms of a percentage. Also with leader index, we saw 61% of leaders of our organization fell within the high leader index score. 25% um, fell within moderately high. So we're looking at 86%, a huge portion of our leaders were doing really, really well, trusted, performing well with their teams as rated by their team members. But um, we're going to, we want to show you at a deeper level what those engagement scores look like before we show you some other organizational outcomes as well. These are the six questions. If you work with Prince Ganey and they do your surveys, you're probably very familiar with these questions. You'll see here our 2019 scores compared to then the national, the raw scores, the leap that we saw for the national healthcare average, the integrated healthcare system average, and you'll also see then the number improvement compared to our 2018 scores. Everything is green, everything went up, which was really awesome. And something that I think is worth noting is what statistical significance look like. You'll see that at the bottom. So if we had only improved in any of these questions, 0.03, <clears throat> So if um, question 94, overall I'm a satisfied employee, if in 2019 that score was 4.03, and if we had jumped another 4.03 to 4.06, that would have been a statistically significant leap to say, you know what, your employees are, it's not just chance, they are much more satisfied. So to jump almost seven times statistical significance in one year, we felt really great about our staff saying, you know what, I am much more satisfied than I was a year ago. Honor Health is a great place to work. I would stay here if I was offered a position elsewhere. I plan to be working here three years from now. I'm proud to tell people I work for Honor Health and I would recommend Honor Health to family and friends who need care. Those were just tremendous results, but it's not just about engagement. It's culture as a driver of safety. You'll see here that we also asked questions that were aligned with Press Ganey's safety solution. And so when we asked our staff about prevention and reporting, our score was 0.15 above the national average. Again, that's five times statistical significance. So when we asked our staff about resources and teamwork, we were three times statistical significance in terms of being better than the national healthcare average. In terms of pride and reputation, that was also three times statistical significance, well above the national healthcare average. 
We also, though, asked about resilience. And this is so timely. None of us could have known that COVID is around the corner uh, in 2020. But we asked our staff, you know, how resilient do you feel? How, how adept do you feel at your ability to recover and to remain engaged even in challenging work environments? How timely to ask that at the end of 2019? And the overall score was 0 0.06 versus the national healthcare average, twice statistical significance. Part of that is broken down into decompression. So that was our employees saying, you know what, I feel like I can disconnect from work and recharge outside of work. That was four times statistical significance. And then on the flip side, it's activation. We were better than the national healthcare average, not at a statistically significant level, but we still felt good. Look at that score, 4.53. That's still our employees saying, you know, I can decompress, but also I can re-engage with patients and others um, and I see that value in the work. So just to sum up so far, our employees year over year saw a huge leap in terms of engagement. We saw fantastic results in terms of their views about the, the different um, parts that make up safety as well as resilience. Beyond that, something that Honor Health is very, very proud of is that every one of our major hospitals is magnet certified. And so part of what we were also able to survey our nurses on last year was the different domains that make up nursing excellence. You'll see here, the blue bars are the Honor Health scores and the orange bars were the July 2019 nursing excellence norms that Prince Kenny had put together. And so when you look at our scores in terms of magnet and nursing excellence, every single domain Honor Health was leaps and bounds better than the nursing excellence norm range of the resources and staffing, autonomy, the fundamentals of quality nursing care, our nurses rating us on interprofessional relationships, access to leaders and the responsiveness of their leaders, professional development, and RN to RN, teamwork and collaboration. We felt very, very proud of this. But don't take our word for it. You've heard me bragging, um, and I, you hate to brag, but these are just great results and they demand to be heard. But here's a quote that I wanna share from Mitch Harris. He is a senior regional director at Press Ganey. He is our partner. And um, you know, when we were scratching our heads, looking at these results last fall, we said, Mitch, can it be true? You know, this is amazing. He sent us a note and, and he's quoted as saying, I've been with Press Ganey for five years and Mitch had never seen an improvement in engagement like the one Honor Health had from last year, 2018, to this year in fall of 2019. It's a remarkable accomplishment and huge congratulations to all. But again, it wasn't even just that. We saw other organizational outcomes as well. We believed that if we could improve our culture, it would lead to higher employee engagement. And we saw that. We thought it could lead to other organizational outcomes, the magnet criteria, those domains, outperforming the norms, we did that. Safety, how people viewed um, their ability to work in a safe environment and to do quality work. We did that. But it's also other outcomes as well. You'll see here retention. We saw a 2.1 decrease in year over year turnover during this time that I've talked through. And that equated to a $2.6 million savings, um, which that's, that's tangible dollars that more than made up for all that we did to drive cultural change and then some. So this work, if you're considering work like this, or if you're in the midst of it, hopefully this gives you some meaningful data that you can take away back to the leaders that you work with, your stakeholders to say, this work more than pays for itself. And it drives a, a better place where people can, if you think back to those outcomes that we went after, it drives better employee experiences, better patient experiences, and better organizational outcomes. With that, before we close, I wanna share with you a video. It's, it's easy for you to look at me, I'm a talking head and to hear about these values. But this was a video that our organization put together last year where you can really see how our values come to life. So I'm really happy to share that with, with you in the spirit of our past, our present, and in the future of Honor Health. I care, and the entire team at the Research Institute cares about innovation by keeping an open mind, embracing change, taking risks, and maintaining a creative mindset as we work to continuously improve the care that we provide. I care, and all of our physicians care, 
about building trust and partnering with others within and across boundaries so we can provide the best care and drive excellent outcomes. I care and the entire organization cares about driving a spirit of excellence, stewardship, and integrity in all that we do for others. I care and the entire medical group cares about treating others the way that we want to be treated. I care, as do our clinical staff, about being vulnerable and seeking first to understand others so we can better meet their needs and the needs of their family. Our mission is to improve the health and well-being of our community. We do this through innovation, collaboration, accountability, respect, and empathy. With that, I want to bring our time together to a close. Thank you so much for taking the time to take a look at the journey that Honor Health has been on. And I hope that you've been able to take away some, some meaningful best practices or even just practices. Maybe they're not the best practices, but maybe they're practices that you can take away and apply in your workplace to make it a better place.